Hi, and welcome to Big Blue News. I'm John Doe. And I'm Andy. Let's not waste any time and get right into these stories. March Madness has kicked off in Swanscott with the student versus teacher basketball game taking place on, place on March 16th. The event was a fundraiser for the senior class and the Room of Color social group. Leading up to the game, tensions were high, with a quote from Eddie Rovey saying, I feel great about the game. I'm going to take out Temp and Riyadh. I'm going to target their ankles. It's more painful that way. The game started off heavily favoring the students. Then the teachers started to make a comeback before ultimately losing to the students, with the final score being 52 to 51. The event was a great success, with the total amount raised being a little over $2,000. The game sounded really fun and intense, and it also sounded like an amazing fundraiser. Yeah, I wasn't there, but I heard it was a really fun game to watch. This past Friday, the Parent Teacher for Forum hosted a fundraiser at the Swampscott, at Swampscott High School that was sponsored by Bent Water. This fundraiser was to help raise money for both the junior and senior classes, as they thought that there was some work to do after COVID made fundraising fall a little behind. They had an auction and raffle items that the people in the attendance were able to bid for, with a chance to own various items. Some of these items that were auctioned off included a signed David Ortiz baseball bat, front row seats to graduation, gift cards to local restaurants, and more. Mr. Franklin's band, the Taylor Twins, played throughout the event as entertainment. The PTF representative, Gardy Cooper, said that this was all, uh, that, was, that made this all possible said, it was, a, it was a success for both classes, as this will now become a yearly fundraiser. Hopefully the fundraiser made um, prom tickets and all, every, other, every other thing cheaper. Yeah. It's, yeah, I'm happy this will be every year now too, it would, because now um, a lot of people, if they're like tight on money and stuff, can afford going to our school events. With the recent, recent closing of Zest Friends on Humphrey Street, there will be a new pub coming into Swampscott called the Dockside Pub. The owner, Andrew Ngemi, states on thepatch.com, I want to put something here that I think the, the town lacks and would enjoy. The owner also states on patch.com that with the prop, proper approvals, the target for the Dockside Pub is open June 1st. This will be a first for Swampscott and will hopefully be a big success. And we hope for the best for this new pub so it could bring some more attention to Swampscott. I'm sad that Zest Friends is, clo is closing, but I wish um, the Dockside Pub the best of luck. Yeah, I think they'll do very good in Swampscott, being the, one of the only pubs. Mr. Reed, a Swampscott High School English teacher and media literature teacher, is retiring after many years of teaching. Mm -hmm. He said it's finally time to go and do what he loves. Mr. Reed is an accomplished musician, and he intends to spend time playing with his band, the American Who, a Who cover band. While at Swamp Scott High School, Mr. Reed ran an auction that he started in 1999 to fund the TV program. He started the auction because neither the school nor the town could afford to upgrade the equipment or, or replace broken equipment. Mr. Reed first started out as a film teacher here before hiring Mr. Doulette in 2015. They co-taught for a year before Reed fully moved into teaching media literacy courses. This year, he started teaching uh, English along with his media literature classes. We all enjoyed Mr. Reed's classes and he will be missed. I had Mr. Reed um, freshman year and he was a really good teacher. It's sad to see him go. Yeah. Uh, I, did not, I, have not, I, will, I do not have Mr. Reed this year because I'm, I'm, I'm a freshman, but I wish him the best of luck, especially since we probably wouldn't be here if not for him. For years, SHS baseball and softball players have been upset with one thing. Their sports are one of the only sports that are not being broadcasted by SHS TV. The reason for this is that there are no fiber optic cables at the fields, meaning there is no efficient way to stream the games. However, this issue has recently been brought up by the Vice President of Swanscott Little League, Al Pika, who thinks that it would be great for families to be able to watch the games that their kids are playing in the Little League or in the high school because they're not always able to get to the field on time. This idea has the support from the Department of Public Works, who also wants to install a network to put up security cameras. With this idea being supported by the town of Swanscott and its community, we hope residents of Swanscott will be able to watch their town's baseball and softball games from the comfort of their own homes. 
I've played baseball for a long time, and I always wanted my games to be filmed so my family from far away can see them. So I'm super, ex I'm super excited that that the games can hopefully be filmed soon. Yeah, this will be very great. This one's good. This month at SHS, the school has put together Mental Health Awareness Month to raise awareness for, you guessed it, mental health. Every Monday, the school has an assembly to discuss a different aspect of mental health with students as well as play games for gift cards to places like Starbucks and Chipotle. We want the students to, at the school to know that wellness is important. The school cares for, about all of its students' well-being. The school also recently bought a pony with a, and a donkey to, uh, as well for this month. Many students have expressed their opinions to, on this month. Andrew Lagerquist, a senior at SHS, said it was all right and said that the pony and donkey were cool. All in all, the, student, the school is smart to put this event together to raise awareness for this important cause. Our next story is about the drama club. Let's go live to the auditorium. Welcome to Big Blue News Live. Today, we're in the auditorium interviewing students about the drama fest that happened this past weekend. What are your names and what was your role? My name is Scout and I was DMV Lady and Stella. My name is Jojo and I was a crew member. What is drama fest? Um, it's like a bunch of schools from our region um, do, um, do, do, like perform their shows at, for at, a, at a festival. Yeah, and there's also a competing portion with it, which there is judges and they judge the show based on acting and tech management and stuff. What was your favorite part about Drama Fest? Um, I love meeting all the other people there who also are in theater. I like meeting all the other people there and being able to cheer everybody on. How much preparation did it take to become to like get so far in the final? Um, we didn't actually do that much. <laughs> well, the play was already um, yeah, established <laughs> from the play we did in the fall. Mm -hmm. We did uh, like like nine short plays from Christopher Durang. We chose the two favorites that were actually really, really good. And we just did that pretty much. And how did it go? How did the finals go? Um, they went good. It was, um, it was really amazing that we got to be there. No one had that coming, but we did make it there. All right. Yeah, we didn't expect to be there, it, though it was really, really fun, and I n I've never really experienced anything like it. And it's funny, because this is my first year in drama club, like, ever. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Back to the studio. That's it for today. My name is Andy. And my name is John Doe. And we'll see you all next time on Big Blue News. So.